Hello, hello everyone. My name is Elise. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. I am very excited today because we are going to be reacting to the Penn Literary Awards. Only a specific section really, really the translated section, the translated literature section. Um, so I have done this once before with the translated section for the National Book Award and I very much enjoyed doing them and like talking about them with all of you. So I'm going to do that again for this award. Now I do really love the Penn Literary Awards. I think that one, it's a very expansive award. So there are many, many, many categories that they award money for and honestly it's it's really important for the authors to be able to get some additional money for these amazing books. Um, so I appreciate that they do that as well. So of course the winners get cash prizes. That is great. Love that journey for them. So I'm going to go over the long listed books for the translated literature section. Um, the short list is going to be coming out sometime in February. I don't know when they haven't announced it. So hopefully this goes out before then. Who knows? Um, even if it doesn't, you'll have the long list. Um, and then the winners are going to be announced on March 2nd. So there's still plenty of time to try and read some of these if you want to try and read them before the winner is announced. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about this list. So I will go ahead and get into it. But the last thing that I want to say before is um, something that I really love about the Penn Literary Awards is they also have a full dedicated section to translated poetry. So if you love poetry, they have a whole section dedicated to poetry and translation, which I think is amazing. Um, sometimes I feel like it can be really difficult to find translated poetry in English. Um, so it's lovely that they have that whole section. Um, and if I had all the time in the world, I would go over that as well. But we are just going to stick to the literature today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one that's listed is All Your Children Scattered. And this is by Beata Umuvei Marise and translated by Alice Anderson. And it's translated from the French. So this novel, I'm going to do short blurbs since there's a few to get through. Um, this novel is a debut novel and this has been getting a lot of buzz. It's been nominated for other prizes as well. And this follows three generations torn from genocide in uh, against the Tutsis. So it takes place in Rwanda and they're all trying to reconnect with one another and find their place in the new modern world. So that is All Your Children Scattered. I'm very much interested in that one. Um, I don't tend to like reading about wars, but I, I've heard great things and I think this will be a good one to pick up. Next one is The Tatami Galaxy and this is by Tomihiko Morimi and it's translated from the Japanese by Emily Balistrieri and it's published by Harper Via. So this one follows a college student who is basically thrown into a bunch of parallel realities and has to explore what might have been um, and what should never be in sort of like a Groundhog Day type of style. Um, and this book is very popular in Japan. It came out a while ago, if I'm remembering correctly, like the original publishing in Japanese was a while ago. And I do believe this also has an anime for it. Um, that is very popular as well. Um, but yeah, this one sounds very intriguing. Um, I like the kind of like Groundhog Day-esque, like reliving different versions of your life. Um, I think it's interesting to think about. Um, so that is the Tatami Galaxy. All right, next up is Jawbone, and this is by Monica Ojeda, and this is translated from the Spanish by Sarah Booker, published by Coffee House press. And this one I'm actually currently reading. Um, I've recently started it. So this one is about two girls who are extremely close. They're basically like sisters. Um, and it sort of has a flash forward moment in the very first chapter where you realize that one of the girls has been kidnapped by one of their teachers. And you, then you flash back 
and sort of figure out how they got up to this point. Now this does follow multiple perspectives. So you get each of the perspectives of the two girls, and then you also get the perspective of the teacher who has kidnapped one of them. That's very interesting in its own right, because you get to see their different perspectives of the past. Um, and how they were interpreting things. This is very dark and it very much has the like evil teenage girl <laughs> type of vibes. So if you're not into that, it might not be for you. Um, but yeah, that is the setup of Jawbone and I'm very excited to continue reading this one. Okay, the next book that we have on the list is Call Me Cassandra and this is by Marcial Gala and it's translated from the Spanish, I believe, by Anna Kushner. And this one also sounds very interesting. So this follows the perspective of a 10 year old um, named Rowley and they have a very hard life. Their father is a philanderer, their brother is extremely violent, um, and they know three things to be true, it says. First, that he was born in the wrong body. Second, that he will die aged 18 as a soldier in the Cuban intervention in Angola. And third, that he is the reincarnation of the Trojan princess Cassandra. So that sounds amazing. So interesting. Again, I think that this book will incorporate parts of war, which I don't typically love, but I love that premise and I'm very intrigued. I also don't typically like following child narrators, but yeah, something about this like feeling like they're in the wrong body and then predicting their own death and that they're really a princess. I'm just into that. Like, doesn't that sound so fun? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get into this one at some point. I do think this will be one that I pick up. That is Call Me Cassandra. Next one we have is also one that I've been seeing a lot of places and that is Moldy Strawberries. And this is by Kyle Fernando Abrey. And it is translated from the Portuguese by Bruna Dantas Lobato. And this one is published by Archipelago, I think. Let's see. Yeah, this one's published by Archipelago. Um, and this one is a collection of short stories. So this has short stories that are about desire, tyranny, fear, and love. Um, and this is a, an author who is from Brazil. I actually have some of their other work on my shelves already. I have Hugs and Cuddles, and then I also have an anthology that has a work by them as well. So I'll probably get to those first, but if I like them, it's good to know that this is available. And I think this says, it, it follows um, narrators in Brazil, that are affected by the AIDS epidemic and also the military dictatorship there. Um, and it has a man speckled with carnival glitter, crosses a crowded dance floor and seeks the warmth and beauty of another body. Another story is about a budding office relationship between two young men that turns into a surprising love. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to uh, see what people think of this and to see what I think of the other works I have by the author and decide if I want to come to this next. But it does sound very good. Um, so yeah, that is Moldy Strawberries. All right, the next book that we have is another one that I own and that is Tonio the Infallible. This is by Avelio Rosero and it's translated from the Spanish by Victor Meadowcroft and Anne McLean. And this is published by New Directions. This one, the tagline is so good. I, I need to just read it to you because this is why I picked it up. Um, so this says, it's a gripping novel about an intense relationship between a writer and a sociopath. I mean, that you had me at hello with that. You had me at sociopath. Um, so this one follows a friendship and I think it's one of the friends who is thinking back about their relationship and like starting to discover all the strangeness that their relationship held. Um, so this says it's unique in tone and structure. As I flip through, I'm not sure what that means, um, but it follows them from their school days and then into their adult years um, and it involves like a hippie cult at one point and a theatrical exhibition of the history's most violent crimes. Uh, so yeah, this just seems like it's gonna be a wild ride and I can't wait for it. So 
I'm glad I have this on my shelves. I definitely want to get to it soon. This just gives me another little urge to pick it up. So that is Tonio the Infallible. Okay, the next one that is nominated is one that has been on my radar for a while and I'm actually waiting to receive a hold from the library for it. Um, and this is Ghost Town and it's by Kevin Chen and it's translated from the Taiwanese by Daryl Sturk and published by Europa. So this one follows um, a son of a Taiwanese family of seven, and he runs away from his oppressive village to Berlin, um, where he hopes that he can live and have acceptance as an openly gay man. But then you sort of flash forward 10 years and it's him getting out of prison because he has killed his boyfriend. Um, so I think there's sort of like a mystery around what happened with that. And then he's also about to return back to the village where he's from, reunite with his family in complicated ways. So this sounds so good. I can't wait until my library hold goes through and I can read this. Um, I've heard amazing things and it just sounds right up my alley, like a little bit of mystery, lots of complicated family dynamics. It's queer. Like what more could you want? Nothing. So that is Ghost Town. All right, we have three more left. So the next one is one that I immediately put on my TBR once I read the synopsis for this. And this is People from Bloomington. And this is by Budi Dharma, translated from the Indonesian by Tiffany Sao. And this one is published by Penguin. And it's a short story collection. And it contains seven stories of the people from Bloomington. Um, and all of them are sort of like peculiar narrators who find themselves in peculiar cir circumstances. And it's just kind of all kinds of quirky and weird. It's set in Bloomington, Indiana. And I think it's supposed to be a, like a satire almost on small town America, which I'm very intrigued by. And this kind of dynamic where people are isolated in some ways just because the expanse of space but also are like very obsessed with each other in regards to like the small town gossip. It just sounds so fun and peculiar for lack of a better word. So I'm very intrigued by this. I, I definitely want to get my hands on this one as well. Um, I've never read anything by the author before. I have read um, some stuff by Tiffany Sal before that she has translated. Um, but yeah, very intrigued for this one. And I definitely want to pick it up at some point. The next book that we have here is a nonfiction book, and this is A Line in the World, colon, A Year on the North Sea Coast, and this is by Dorothy Norris, and it is translated by whom? Carolyn Waite, and I think this is translated from the Danish. I know the author is Danish. I think it's translated from the Danish. Could be the French. Who knows? Um, but I think it's Danish. And this is almost like the author's journal. Um, so they are chronicling their year that they spent traveling along the North Sea coast. Um, so from Skagen at the northern tip of Denmark, it's nice that there's a map behind me, um, to the Frisian Islands in the Waden Sea. So it follows that year long journey. And not only is she kind of tracing the geography and the history and the culture of all these places as she's visiting them, but she's also interspersing it with um, her heritage and how her heritage is associated to all of the places that she's visiting. So it sounds very interesting. This is another one that I've put on my um, TBR. So yeah, I definitely wanna see what this one is about. I am just loving nature writing as of late. So I'm curious for that alone. Plus it also sounds interesting that it's also like part um, personal history and part like cultural history. I like the blending of that. So yeah, that is a line in the world. All right. And the last one on this list is Pina. And this is by Taitaya Peu. And it's translated from the French by Jeffrey Zuckerman. And actually, maybe there's a second translator. There is. So the second translator is Rajiv Mohabar. And this one also follows a child narrator, I believe, um, which is interesting. And it follows a, a family as a whole 
who is torn apart by family secrets and the legacy of colonialism. A nine-year-old girl, Pina, um, is basically shouldering, it says, an immeasurable weight of her family's secret. So this has like lots of trauma in the description, so trigger warnings for that. Pina trying to protect her younger sister and all of her other siblings are sort of caught in their own traumatic experiences. Um, and secrets are coming out. And I do think this has a lot to do with colonialism in Tahiti um, and how there's like, you know, all the pristine beaches and everything that people see in regards to tourism, but then all of the extreme poverty and exploitation that is happening under the surface. So yeah, this one I'm sure will be very hard hitting, um, but it does sound fantastic. And I love a takedown of colonialism. So yeah, that is the last book on this list. And I should say, Pina is published by Restless Books. So yeah, that is the list. I hope some of these you have found interesting. Um, I'm very excited for these. And I will say, just a little shout out, the other section that I think just sounds amazing this year that I have already um, ordered some of the books for is the Literary Science Writing Award. There are so many in there that sound phenomenal. I highly recommend you check them out, but I'll just pull out three that I'm very interested in right off the bat. Um, one is Vagina Obscura, An Anatomical Voyage. This is by Rachel E. Gross. Um, and yeah, this is all about the history of the vagina. And another one is Heartbreak, A Personal and Scientific Journey. This is by Florence Williams. And I think this explores like the biological responses of heartbreak um, and some of the physiological implications of that. So very intrigued as well. And the last one that I'm just super, super excited about, Dancing Cockatoos and the Dead Man Test. And this is How Behavior Evolves and Why It Matters by Marlene Zuck. Sounds amazing. All of them sound really good in that category. So again, so I really highly recommend you check them out and check out some of the other categories for the Pen Awards. There's, like I said, a bunch of them. So I highly recommend you look at them. And with that, please tell me if there are any in here that interested you. Um, have you read any of these? I very much want to know because I haven't read any of them other than like I'm currently reading Jawbone. So please let me know what you thought of them. Um, yeah. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.